as a combo pack of three areas of study. Photography, a science fan, and someone who's incredibly interested in how we all perceive our foods. I'm about to show you how this unrelenting desire to combine all of these three things led to an amazing discovery of art in what we eat three times a day. I also want this to be an invitation for you to use your eyes, your imagination, and all those devices you called cameras to in investigate something that you are passionate about. As a commercial photographer, I specialize in food-related content, plated food, chef portraits, and restaurant interiors. These pictures appear in magazines, cookbooks, and catalogs. I'm also interested in science and technology, thanks to a magazine I read as a child called 321 Contact. It's a science magazine for kids. And I was always captivated by the last page of the magazine, which were abstract photos of the most ordinary things around. As a visual person, I was looking to see if I could bring that sense of artistry to the foods that we ate. Around two and a half years ago, I was perfectly poised to act on this trifecta of the things that interested me, food, science, and art. I had seen a story about the dying honeybee population, and it was illustrated with scanning electron micrographs of the bees. These images captivated me. What was a specimen became a poetic version of itself, and I immediately wondered if I could do the same thing with the foods we eat all the time. I found access to a scanning electron microscope, and I was off and running. I discovered in our foods form, texture, composition, in a way that I had never thought I would experience. I'd like you to think about what you had for breakfast this morning or what you ate for dinner last night and come on a journey with me over the surface of some of our favorite foods in a series I call Terracibis. This first image is a coffee bean. It represents one of the world's leading traded commodities. It's a decaf coffee bean. <laughs> coffee beans are roasted at temperatures that rapidly expand water vapor, CO2, and the air inside them. The gases get discharged, rupturing the bean surface with cracks, like the upper left to, to mid-right. The cells of the bean end up dehydrated and emptied, leading to a pitted texture. The thick plant cell walls are outlined in whitish rings at the bottom. A caffeinated bean would be different. This is at 80 magnification. In nature's recipe for salt, aka sodium chloride, positively charged ions of sodium match up with negatively charged ions of chlorine. Throw a bunch of them together, and voila! They arrange into a 3D lattice, like a tinker toy, with every sodium linked to six chlorines and vice versa. The result are cube-shaped crystals that layer atop each other and look like icebergs. This is chocolate cake. Who doesn't like a little chocolate cake? During baking, oven heat expands air bubbles in the batter with an extra boost from CO2 that the baking soda releases. The cake rises with the help of extra ingredients like flour, water, butter, sugar, and eggs. The final product is airy with millions of pores, which create that light, fluffy texture so pleasing to the mouth. Close up, this chocolate cake looks almost geologic with sugar crystals protruding from its crust. This is a pineapple leaf. This tropical plant is a champ at conserving water. The deep furrows between the ridges are carpeted, it seems, by flowers. These structures, called trichomes, are tiny fuzzy hairs topped with multi-celled parasols that mimic fragile blossoms. To the naked eye, trichomes give the, leafy, give the leaf a silvery white appearance, which is what we see in the grocery store when we look at their tops. 
Ironically, this very component of the leaf is how the pineapples are actually grown in their crops. That's at 85 magnification. To me, this image is passion. But did you know that tomatoes are the second most consumed vegetable in the world next to potatoes? Originally from Peru, then Spain, and finally Italy. The genealogy of the tomato has a dark past, coming from the same plant family as tobacco and has poisonous family members. As you might imagine, it took a long time to get traction before we could start to thank the Italians for showing us delicious pasta sauce. Almond. This is one of my earlier works and still remains one of my favorites. If you think of opening an almond, there's a hairline crack down the center and a smooth side on each half. At this magnification, the tiny crack is a hairline no more. It's a crevice. And the top and the bottom, which are actually porous, are in real life what is smooth to the touch under your fingers. This leathery looking surface is cabbage, one of the oldest and hardiest vegetables of our time. Cabbage was already in existence during Paleolithic times and has gone on to become one of the first domesticated plants. Did you know that cauliflower, broccoli, and Brussels sprouts are all descendants of the cabbage? Lastly, we have a fortune cookie. Did you know that fortune cookies don't hail from China? According to the New York Times, a man from San Francisco who owned a company called Lotus Foods is responsible for their gain in popularity here in the US. Magnified at 0.8 millimeters wide, this fortune cookie resembles a satellite shot of the desert. That's at 150 magnification. To me, these photos reveal the beauty and biology in our food. The scientific information I gave you is just black, a background to this amazing information I found in the artwork of the foods. But combine the science and the art, and to me, it's awesome. I found narrative in form, texture, and composition. As the famous art critic John Berger once said in his pivotal book, Ways of Seeing, the strange power of art is sometimes it can show that what people have in common is more urgent than what differentiates them. Thank you so much and have an interesting lunch.